everyone. It is Thursday, November 16th, and we are at 35 degrees 20 minutes north, 63 degrees 25 minutes west. Uh, we have just exited uh, the southeast side of the Gulf Stream, uh, so we've gotten over that first hump. Uh, and as you can see, it's quite a bit warmer. Just got a t-shirt on now. And, um, and uh, so that is a welcome change from the cold, that's for sure. Uh, oh, we had quite a fun night last night. Um, I didn't want to get into the Gulf Stream and those strong northeasterlies, uh, so I headed on a more southerly course uh, and waited. And uh, indeed, I entered the Gulf Stream with a fairly moderate northeasterlies. Uh, but of course the Gulf Stream was very bouncy. I mean, we still have a lot of these leftover confused swells. Uh, the only problem is while well, the weather systems were shifting gears and the wind was coming around to the south, uh, we were becalmed for several hours. And so we had these swells knocking us all over the place and the sails slatting back and forth. Um, so it was a lot of fun. And uh, finally picked up kind of south-southwesterlies around 2 in the morning and I was able to put the wind vane back in and uh, we could get sailing again. Um, and then I was awoken uh, from quite a deep slumber actually from around uh, 5, a little after 5 this morning. And, uh, and I find it usually takes me a couple days at sea before uh, I can drop off into a deep sleep even if it's only for an hour or two. So I was in my deep sleep when a series of squalls came through. Uh, not terribly strong ones, but uh, they literally caught me in back. I was trying to tie a second reef in the mainsail, and the headsail got caught in back, so she came around on the other tack, and I still had the preventer on the boom, so then I released that, and the boom slams against the running backstay, and I was still groggy and stumbling around. Um, so, you know, the... Uh, um, the sea doesn't wait for you to finish up your beauty sleep and get all rested. It just throws stuff at you whenever it, uh, whenever it pleases. So, uh, but at any rate, uh, yeah, we're past the Gulf Stream, so that's a good, uh, so we're over the first hump. Now, the next hump we got coming up is the weather. Uh, it looks like this cold front coming off the coast uh, Saturday night into Sunday is going to be quite strong. Uh, so the game plan is to try to get south of about 33 north uh, before Saturday. Uh, we're at 35.20 and uh, we lost some ground in the Gulf Stream. While we were at Macomb, we were getting dragged to the northeast at 2 to 3 knots. So uh, we probably got dragged about 20, 30 miles out of our way. So we're having to resail some of that. Um, but uh, it should be doable. Uh, we have. Uh, good winds in the forecast, going to be a bit brisk, but generally northerly is 15 to 25 knots uh, starting tonight all the way through tomorrow night. Uh, so we should be able to cover a little more than 2 degrees south and uh, get several degrees east as well. Uh, so hopefully it looks like uh, basically north of 33, Saturday night and Sunday, uh, it's going to be gale conditions. Winds up over 30 knots, uh, possibly up to 40 knots. Uh, if we can get if further south, we can get the better. Hopefully south of 33 or so, uh, we're only going to be dealing with maybe 25 to 30, which is uh, still plenty of wind. That'll be out in the southwest, but uh, at least we won't be dealing with a gale. Uh, so fingers crossed. And uh, we got to stick to our game plan here and just keep this sled moving to the southeast, which is what we're doing right now. Uh, we're sailing kind of a more southerly heading, uh, partially because I can't sail dead down wind, but also I want to avoid uh, what looks like a north setting eddy of the Gulf Stream, uh, somewhere around 72 west. Uh, so I don't want to get east of uh, 73 or so until we, uh, until we get a little further south. Uh, uh, just because uh, I don't want to encounter any contrary current. Um, so that's it for today. Uh, again, apologies for the poor sound quality. I have to use my waterproof camera because we've got we got showers around and it's kind of kicked up. So uh, can't bring the good camera out with the microphone today. Anyway, that's the that's all the news that's fit to print.
So I'll do a short vid for you guys today on uh, reefing headsails. Now I know probably most of you on a modern boat, uh, you'll have a Genoa on a roller furler. And these days a modern roller furler will also allow you to reef that sail. Uh, so you can set it uh, only partial way, so you can have it partially rolled up. And that way reduce the sail area when the wind pipes up. However, up to a certain point, um, when you get the sail about 50% rolled in or so, uh, you're really going to want to go to another sail. And uh, what, uh, what many people will do is they'll have another, an inner force day, and uh, they'll set a, a heavy weather jib or heavy weather staysail on that inner force day. And many people will choose to have that a hank on sail for a number of reasons. Uh, one is you don't have the weight and windage aloft of having a whole nother rolled up sail on a stay. Uh, the other thing is it will make it much more easy to detach the force day. Uh, if the boat is primarily rigged as a sloop, um, then the inner force day makes it quite difficult to get that Genoa around every time you come about. Uh, so for a variety of reasons you might want to opt for a, a hank on sail. Now the downside of a hank on sail of course is that uh, you hoist it and you set it and, and that's it. So if it's good for the uh, you know, 25 to 30 knot range then um, the sail, the, you know, then you're all set as long as the wind stays in that range. But if it picks up then with a hank on sail what you're going to have to do is take it off and, and hank on a smaller sail. Or what you can do is have a set of reef points installed in that heavy weather jib or heavy weather staysail. Um, I have a set of reef points installed in my staysail. My staysail is fairly large because it's part of my working sail plan. This is a cutter, not a sloop. Um, and, uh, and the way that'll work is essentially the same, the exact same way slab reefing works on a mainsail. And uh, I'll demonstrate that in a minute. And the main advantage of, of putting a set of reef points or even two sets of reef points in your staysail is that it's a lot less work on the foredeck, especially on a dark and stormy night with the foredeck bouncing all over the place and uh, having to unhank a sail, haul it below, bring another sail up, hank it on and set it. Uh, reefing it is generally much easier. Um, now another thing of course is um, it's far less expensive to put a, a set of reef points in a good heavy weather sail um, than it is to, uh, to build a whole nother sail. So it saves you on sail makers bills as well. Uh, so it's, uh, it's time and money um, well saved. And uh, so I would recommend if, you're, if you go the route of having a heavy weather jib or heavy weather staysail to have a set or two sets of reef points installed in the sail so you can reef it. Uh, I, I think you'll find that's a better arrangement than trying to change, uh, trying to change uh, headsails uh, whenever the wind changes. So obviously the first thing you want to do here is lower the sail down on deck. Now one very important thing you want to do in rough weather and strong winds is to tie a head stop uh, once you have the sail lowered. And uh, that's just a short piece of line uh, right here. I have it tied around where the tack of the sail is secured. And I'm going to pass that through the shackle holding the head of the sail and uh, tie a couple of overhand knots there. And uh, what that will do is prevent the sail from riding up the stay while I'm trying to reef it. And, um, and uh, when the sail rides up the stay, the halyard will sag off to leeward and whip about and uh, can get itself into all kinds of mischief. Now the other thing I did there was to tie the tack cringle. Uh, so just a, a piece of line going from the, the tack cringle, the reef point, uh, down to the shackle where I have the tack of the sail normally secured. Uh, then we move on to the clues. So what I'm doing here is I'm untying uh, the staysail sheets, the jib sheets, and I'm going to retie them so that uh, I pass the line through both the clue cringle and the clue of the sail. So I tie, uh, I tie those two together with the bowline. And uh, that will prevent that heavy clue from flogging about in the wind uh, once, once the sail is set. And then lastly we want to tie in our reef points. Uh, so we find the foot of the sail and uh, we roll it up as best we can and then we'll tie in our reef ties. I have four sets of reef ties. 
Uh, and again, this is to uh, this is to prevent the the foot of the sail, the reef part of the sail, uh, from flogging in the wind and doing damage to the sail. And then finally, of course, is to release the head stop and uh, and raise the reef sail.